Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every one of you. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Hallelujah. Glorious, wonderful Holy Spirit. We say good morning to you and welcome, welcome, welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Take full control in every way. Listen and honor every word that we say. Let everything that comes forth out of our mouth come forth with power. Come forth with honor. Come forth with glory. Come forth to change our story. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have thine own way, O God. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter and you're just the clay. We're just the clay. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor is to you, O King. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. There is no shadow of turning in thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power and live inside of us. Hallelujah. Who is like unto our God? Who is like unto our God? For the songwriter says, how great is our God? How great is his name? He is the greatest one, forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. He said, I'll lead you. Won't you trust in me? How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one, forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. He said, I'll lead you. Won't you trust in me? He never said, I'll lead you if you trust in me. He says, I will lead you. Won't you trust in me? If we trust in him, he will lead us to the path of righteousness for his name's sake, for his glory. He desires to do and to be and to glorify himself through you and me. God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Jesus is a good God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is awesome in this place. He's our almighty God. He is awesome in this place. He's our Abba Father. He is worthy of all praise. To him our lives we raise. Jesus is awesome in this place. He's Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Mm. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. For it is the sweetest name I know. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you come in this morning, I just want you to come in with the name Jesus on your lips. As you come in, as you sign on, as you say good morning, Holy Spirit, and welcome. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. Welcome. I just want you to say that name. I want you to say thank you, Jesus, from a place of sincerity, a place of understanding, a place of purpose, a place of love. 
I want you to say thank you, Jesus. And when you know you have said it, uh, uh, from the deep depths in your belly, in your soul, in your spirit, uh, you'll feel the difference. Uh, his name is awesome. His name is powerful. His name is wonderful. His name is glorious. His name is sanctifying. His name is healing. His name is deliverance. His name is breakthrough. His name is defense. His name is strong tower. His name is Shakina. His name is the cleft of the rock. His name is the rock. His name will take stock. His name, the devil will shock. Oh, come on, somebody. You're not hearing me. If you're calling by his name, I wish somebody in their space this morning. I don't care if you're at work. Hold down your mouth and say, Jesus. If you're in a place where there are agnostics and atheists, still say, Jesus. Jesus. If they're in a place where you can't say it because you feel shame, still say Jesus. For those who are not ashamed of him, he will not be ashamed of them. And so I just want you this morning uh, to say Jesus, say Jesus, say Jesus, not like when you're having an episode, not like when you're an ex having an experience, not like when you're having a human to human encounter that is so nice that you have to call the name of Christ, not that way, not like when you have a near, near miss encounter on the road, you almost crash and you said Jesus. Jesus Christ, not that way, not when you hit your foot against a table and you bounce your knee or your elbow or you got hit by something and you call the name, not that way, oh somebody not hearing me this morning, I'm saying Jesus, 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 I call him by his name, the name that evokes a meaning of love, a name that brings out something inside of us. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Hallelujah. Lord, if you even the cry of sinus is gonna just mess up the ministry this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Family, call him by his name. He wants to come to visit you this morning. He wants to visit you personally this morning. He wants to put in a Shekinah glory appearance this morning. Jesus, Jesus, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you in this time. We need you in this season. You said if we call upon your name, your name is a strong tower. You said if we run into your name, we will be safe. We call your name this morning. Oh, how we love your name, Jesus. Your name is a door opener. Your name is a game changer. Your name is an atmosphere shifter. Your name gives us authority. Your name is an influencer. Your name gives us power. Your name removes all shame. Thank you for your name. Thank you for the authority to use your name Jesus Jesus oh there's something about his name he's our master he's our savior He's Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Call him by his name, Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim all kings and their kingdoms shall all pass away but lord there's something about your name here we say jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim as we call him by his name we proclaim he is boss he is lord all by himself every king and every kingdom ah uh, vladimir putin and his massive kingdom of and his arsenal of of icbms his arsenal of nuclear weapons his arsenal of soldiers will bow to the name of jesus hallelujah kim jong-un xi jinping joe biden Trudeau, hallelujah prime minister of great britain of italy of france regardless of which country they're from australia regardless of which nation they are lording over regardless of the amount of men and women that are assigned to protect them regardless of the power they yield to press a button and destroy millions and billions of lives just by the name just by the name jesus not by a nuclear warhead not by a mighty army oh you're not hearing me kings and kingdoms shall all pass away but lord there's something about your name when we stand in your name we are not the same your name took every blame and every shame your name we proclaim this day for your name has fixed everything concerning us in every way great is thy faithfulness O Lord our father there is no shadow of changing of turning in thee thou changest not thy compassion they fail not great is thy faithfulness Lord unto us hallelujah hallelujah your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence is what we seek. Your presence, hallelujah, will make us meek. Your presence manifested will make us unique. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence we seek. Manifest your presence, O oh God. Manifest your presence, Lord Jesus. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. Every Fourth Watch family home needs your presence. Every Fourth Watch family member needs your presence. Let your presence manifest upon us today. Let your presence open doors for us that no man can shut. Let your presence reaffirm us, O oh God, as mighty sons and daughters of the Most High God. Let your presence, O oh God, be a Shekinah glory representing in us and through us as it did your son, your servant Moses. Let your Shekinah glory be our calling card, that glory that goes before us and that glory that is our rear guard. Lord, 
let your presence, let your presence, let your presence, O Holy One of Israel, manifest to heal, to deliver, to set free, to make whole. Manifest your presence, O Holy One, Holy God, fully God, yet you became fully man. Manifest, Holy One. Manifest in our lives this morning. Manifest that those who have turned up not for a reward, but for an award can experience you. Lord, we do not seek payment for rising five o'clock every morning. We seek presence. Let your presence be rich and powerful, powerful in us, around us, and through us. Glorify yourself, O oh God. Glorify yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let none of us leave the same way we came. Pour out your anointing upon us this morning. Pour out your glory. Pour out your presence. Just, just, you know what, Lord? Just say, you know what? Cho, cho, cho. I know they can't handle it, but I'm going to just manifest. Oh, God. Show up and show off, oh God. Show off. God, we know you're not a God of pride, but show off on us this morning. Show off on us this day. Show off on us this afternoon. Show off on us this evening. Whatever time zone your people are in today, oh God, I ask you, show off, Lord. Show off by the glory of your presence. Show off, oh God. We don't want to be like we were yesterday. We don't want to be like we were last week, last month, last year. We're asking you for a next level anointing, a next level presence. For your anointing, the anointing of yesterday has been used up. The anointing of yesterday ran out. We want the permanency of your presence. Oh God, anointing can lift, but your presence will go nowhere. Anointing can shift, can water down, can be stymied or stifled or delayed or derailed. But your presence goes nowhere. Lord, we need anointing. For without anointing, our actions are of power, of might. Our actions are of intellect. But with your presence, anointing becomes permanent. Anointing without presence, hallelujah, is like a gift or a reward for a work done, for an action. But anointing by presence is a permanent manifestation from a relationship. Oh, Father, as a son, may we permanently live and move and have our being in your presence. In your presence, Lord. Lord Jesus, as we call your name this morning, may your name bring your presence. May your presence bring the manifestation of your spirit. May the manifestation of your spirit brings power. And may your power bring healing and deliverance and transformation. May your presence change us, rearrange us. Oh, Father, your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Ha hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come just now to say thank you, O King. You're not just a part of our lives. Lord, you're our everything. 
Your love reaches way down deep within. Lord, it passes all human understanding. And there will always be a song for you. We sing. Lord, words alone just can't express our heart's desire. Our gratitude for one more day, our needs you supply. Your warm embrace and your tenderness, your patience with us through all our mess. We've come to one conclusion. Hallelujah. Fourth Watch family has come to one finality. Jesus, Lord Jesus, you are the best. So we say hallelujah to you, King Jesus. Hallelujah to our King. Lord Jesus, you are great, and you are almighty, and all honor is to you, O King. Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing, oh, you are great, you are almighty, and all honor is to you, our King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's God all by himself, no matter what we are going through, no matter what we have experienced, no matter what time it is. He is God. He is worthy. He is worthy, worthy of all praise, worthy of all honor, worthy of all glory. He is God all by himself. Hallelujah. From beginning to end, there is no place for argument. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is Lord. Jesus is risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is our Lord, He is God all by Himself. He's not just our God, He is the God. He is the only wise God. Sometimes when we say Jesus Christ is, hallelujah, the God, He's our God. We, 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 we give those who do not understand a way out. We give them an opportunity to claim another God because Jesus Christ is the God of Christians. 
But I say to you this morning, Jesus Christ is not the God of Christians. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is not the God of Christians. He is the God of the universe. He is the God of all gods. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the good, is the great I am. He is the gift of all gifts. He is the one true and living God and beside him there is no other God. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. He is all by himself. Yes. He is not just our God. He is God alone. From before time began, he's God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone on TikTok called Lily Pop. Lily Pop says, prayer please. Pray for me please. Pray for me, please. In the midst of his presence, Lillipop, as you reach out wherever you are, as you reach out, I'm seeing in the spirit, I'm seeing in the spirit right now, like a crowd of people walking down a street. And I see you, Lillipop, reaching through that crowd you're not worthy you shouldn't be there for you many people don't care but you're reaching out because you are desperate you're reaching out because you have no other option you're reaching out because you have come to the end of your wits you have tried everything lily pop you have tried and tried and tried Everything that you could try, you have tried, and yet still you are at that place that you are not pleased with. You're at that place where you're not as loved as you need to be. You're not as loved as you want to be. You're at that place where you wonder if you will ever be loved the way you are supposed to be. But this morning the Lord is saying, Lily Pop, as you press in, Yes, you're in an environment where you shouldn't be. Yes, you're in an environment where you're not welcomed. Yes, you're in an environment where you're not experiencing the kind of intimacy, the kind of joy, the kind of satisfaction that you desire or deserve. But God is saying, press through. Press through and touch the hem of his garment. Press through Lily Pop and just touch him. For as you have pressed through this morning and have touched the hem, this garment represents the garment of Jesus. And you have pressed through and by saying, pray for me, please, you have touched the hem of his garment and you have said, hallelujah, Lord, I come into your presence this morning believing that I can touch despite my circumstances, despite the situations around me, I can touch. And so God is saying, Lily Pop, like everyone else on this broadcast this morning, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Arrows International Radio, God is saying, as you press in this morning, as you press in, even if you didn't ask for personal prayer, as you press in by your presence, as you press in by your worship, as you press in by your faith, hallelujah, hallelujah. God says virtue is leaving. And so Lily Pop, I prophesy to you this morning that virtue has left Jesus. Virtue has left the Holy Spirit. And Lily Pop, your situations, your circumstances are being addressed as we speak. Speak. They are shifting. They are turning. For you desire love. You desire a love that, 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 that you have not yet understood. That you have not yet received. And Jesus says this morning I'm pouring my liquid love into you Lily Papa. For you have sought refuge. You have sought peace. You have sought love. You have sought ah, satisfaction. And you have sought comfort. You have sought that 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 the place of safety in places where it was not and could not be found and you end up hurt and you've been disappointed and you've been broken but God says this morning this morning this morning lily pop I shift that which concerns you I shift that which concerns you I change your circumstances I change your your place and I release you into the fullness of my goodness I 
will become your husband, Lillipop. God says, I will become your husband, man, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do not look to man. Do not look to people. Do not look to humans for your satisfaction, for your comfort, for your peace. Look to me, for I am your full reward. I am your reward, Lillipop, says the Lord. And if you will look to me, look to me for a season. God says, if you will treat him as your best gift, the gift that he just keeps on giving to you from now until December 31st. God says, if you will focus on him, let him be your present help in times of trouble. Let him be that that, that that anointing that flows upon you. Stop looking at people. Stop looking at what others didn't do. Stop looking at what your parents didn't do and what your your, 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 your spouse, your, your friend, your, your, your intimate partner, your your, your, your so-called associate, your, 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 your soul tie didn't do. Stop looking at what people have done to you, God says, and just look at him. Look at what he has done and what he wants you to experience that is even more than you are trying to find in your encounters with others. God says, Lily Pop, this morning, I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to all my children. And I'm saying to you, stop looking to men. Stop looking to people to fill that gap. I alone can fill that space. I alone can fill you up until you overflow. I alone, says God, can cause you to be anointed sons and daughters in me. I alone can make you an anointed son that I can trust. And if I can trust you, then men will trust you. If I love you, then men will hate you. If I anoint you, then men will disappoint you. Understand that the closer you are to me, says God, is the further you will be from man. You will have to make an effort to go to man to take what I have given you. Men will run away from you. Understand that the glory of the Lord, hallelujah, will be too bright for some people. The glory of the Lord. That's why so many people don't want to come up high in God because they are so dependent on man. They're so dependent on what man say and what man do. If you begin to prophesy accurately, some people will leave even though they want to hear what God has to say. They won't stay close to you because they know that the glow of the glory will highlight what iniquity is in them. They know that the glow of the glory will highlight their flaws and faults and weaknesses. And so I'm saying to you, those who will press in, those who will come forward like you, Lillipop, who this morning in this Kairos moment have said, God, I am tired of being on the outskirts. I'm tired of the issue of blood. I'm tired of being bent over for 18 years. I'm tired of being blind. I'm tired of being crippled. I'm tired of leprosy. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of being at the pool of Bethesda for years, 38 years with no assistance. I'm sick and tired of just living, just getting by, living on the crumbs of people. I'm tired of being brought by those who say they care about me to the door of the church, but I never get to go inside. Oh, somebody didn't hear that. I'm, be, I'm tired of going to church but not getting what church is supposed to give me. Oh, that's what happened. Come on, Holy Ghost revelation right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, the man at the gate of Temple Beautiful. He kept being brought to the church door every day, but he never entered. Ah, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm, that can preach. Oh, there's some of us who get Get taken to church. We go into church by our own self because we have legs, we have hands and feet, we have car or we have taxi fare or bus fare. We go into church, but church doesn't go into us. We go into the presence, but the presence doesn't come into us. The man at the temple, beautiful, he was at the gate of the temple. He was experiencing men and women of God going and coming, but he never experienced God going into him. Oh, but one day, one day like you, Lillipop, one day today, the presence of God, the truth of God, the anointing of God meets you now like the man at the pool of Bethesda, meets you now like the man at the gate temple beautiful, meets you now like the woman with the issue of blood, meets you today like the woman bent over for 18 years. Does somebody want to face God today? Do you want to meet God today like blind Bartimaeus?
Do you want to cry out to Jesus this morning uh, for an issue that you have not been able to get rid of? Uh, for an issue that has not been able to be solved by doctors? Uh, for an issue that has not been able to solve by those who say they are children of God? Uh, but an issue that those who say that they have high offices, uh, right honorable and right reverent and right this and right that, but they can't get it right for you. Oh, Jesus is the right one. Oh, you got to hear me this morning. Jesus is the right one. I'm saying to you this morning, if you have been at the gate of Temple Beautiful, if you could hear the worship going on, come on, Lily Pop, if you could hear the glory happening inside, but you have not, you have been kept outside. It's been, hey, you've been pushed aside. You've been kept wide. This morning I say to you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, arise, hallelujah. Silver and gold is not what you need today. What you need is the hand of God. What you need is an impartation from God. What you need is the presence of God. What you need is the Shekinah glory of God. What you need is the anointing of God. What you need is the Holy Spirit of God. And that will bring every kind of change you can think think about. And so God, as you minister to Lily Pop this morning, as you pop the bubble of the of the enemy over her life, as you pop that blockage that have stopped her from having a financial breakthrough, as you pop that bubble, oh God, that has locked her away from her blessing, locked her away from her peace. Father God, I thank you that she will no longer realize that that which she is seeking after, she will no longer be captured by what she's seeking after. Lord, she says she need a financial breakthrough. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I beg to differ by your spirit. Lily Pop, let me tell you something, woman of God. Hear me carefully. If you are not walking holy and upright, can I speak truth? Please, I'm begging you, Lily Pop, do not be offended. I offend no one deliberately. When I say something and someone is offended, understand that it is more God saying to you, check your heart. Because I don't, I try my best not to offend. Will something I say seem offensive or come across as offensive or possibly could cause offense? Yes. But please do not take offense to anything I say because I say by the Spirit of God only in love. Amen. Hear me carefully. And I say this to all of us that are listening. Lily Pop is on TikTok. But I say this to all of us listening, us including me. You do not need a financial breakthrough. You need a spiritual breakthrough. You need a spiritual breakthrough. I'm saying to you, Lily Pop, hear me carefully. I don't know if anyone has ever told you this before, woman of God. I'm calling you woman of God and I don't even know what level of relationship you have with the Lord but I'm prophesying woman of God in a mighty way over your life this morning Lily Pop in a lot of instances hear me carefully people of God hallelujah hear me carefully in a lot of instances we come under financial pressure when righteousness holiness and truth is not at the focus or forefront of our minds when we are doing all the things that we, 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 we do as part of our existence, even when we say, Lord, forgive me. If we embrace iniquity in our hearts, if we do not think on the things that are righteous, holy, pleasing to God. The first thing that gets affected in the natural is our finances. Are you hearing me? If you're married and you're not treating your spouse good, the first thing that gets us affected is your finances. Hear me carefully. If you're in sexual immorality, and I'm not talking about immorality as in the, 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 the extreme. I'm talking about adultery or fornication. That's what I'm talking about. The other one, I don't need to tell you that. Duh, you would know that. But if you are in periodic or systematic sexual immorality it affects your finance let me tell you the truth and no amount of lord i'm sorry lord i'm sorry lord i'm sorry every week lord i'm sorry gets you into heaven hear me carefully you don't understand hi lily pop what have you done you, you you threw me off my entire thing this morning but god is faithful hear me woman of god hear me 
you do not need a financial breakthrough. The man at the pool of Bethesda, the man at, um, at the Temple Beautiful, thought he needed a financial breakthrough. He said, may I have some arms? The blind man was begging money. All the people who had a deficiency, which is what a financial breakthrough represents, a deficiency. All the people who had a deficiency that came before God was smart enough or had a revelation enough to say, when Jesus asked them, what do you want? They spoke to what only a spiritual gift could give them. Lily Pop, I could pray for you this morning and God give you a financial breakthrough that is that would mesmerize you. It would be better than winning the lotto. But you know what? In a short time, you would be back asking for prayer for a spiritual, for a, for a financial breakthrough. Because the spiritual breakthrough is what sustains the financial breakthrough. Come on, somebody should write that down. Your spiritual breakthrough, your spiritual understanding, your spiritual foundation, your spiritual strength is what secures your financial breakthrough, is what keeps you in the place of financial prosperity and good success. If you're not walking right spiritually, you will walk wrong financially. Oh, somebody got to hear me. I'm speaking straight from heaven. I got to check my own life right now in a serious way. To make sure come on it is not managing money that makes money last or work for you it's managing your spirituality It's managing your relationship with God that makes money work for you I'm telling you when you begin to manage your spirituality when you begin to walk in spiritual breakthrough money you don't work for money money works for you are you hearing me, people of God? I'm giving you the keys to a financial breakthrough this morning. I'm giving you the keys to the best investment you've ever made. The keys to the best investment you've ever made. Hallelujah. Look in the scriptures. When the man at the gate, temple, beautiful, ha, ha, when Peter lifted him up and he no longer had to beg for money. Come on. He was getting money every day because he was uh, he, he, he couldn't help himself. And so people would give him money. People going into the synagogue would give him money every day. And he had money. He had what he needed to buy food, but he didn't have what he needed to live. He didn't have what he needed to live. And some money could buy food and he could buy clothes, but that was not what would give him life. What he needed to have life was the spirit of the living God. And so when Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto you, understand that what Peter gave to him was more valuable than silver and gold. What Peter gave to him was more valuable than a financial breakthrough. What Peter gave to him was more valuable than relationships with people. What Peter gave to him made people want to have relationships with him. What Peter gave to him made money wanted to chase after him. Oh, you know, not hearing me right now what we are chasing after are the things that should be chasing after us come on somebody hallelujah hallelujah when you have Jesus, people chase after you. When you have Jesus, money chase after you. I keep saying it over and over. God, make me an answer to the problems that ails the world instead of telling the world about the problems that I have. When we come on and we say, Pastor, can you pray for me? Pray for me. I need a financial breakthrough. I need healing. I need deliverance. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. We're telling the world about the things that ail us. The world should be telling us about what ails them and so we must go to God God I need more of you that I can be an answer to what ails the world Lily Pop would not have come on here this morning and say pastor can you pray for me if she didn't think that there was something inside of me called the Holy Ghost by the authority of the name of Jesus that can bring deliverance healing to her issue She's like the woman with the issue of blood. She's like blind Bartimaeus. 
She's like the man at the pool of Bethesda or the one at the gate temple, beautiful. But all of these people, when they receive what Jesus had to offer, the man at the gate temple, beautiful, he jumped up after he, he retained himself. After he got life from a spiritual breakthrough, he jumped up and ran. He jumped up and ran into the presence of God. He ran into a place and began to celebrate. He became an instant evangelist. He became one that some didn't want to see or experience but others wanted to hear his testimony there are some people who will try to discourage you from becoming great in God ah, because they it will show them up but God is saying come on be great in me and you will be appreciated by those who are supposed to appreciate you so there were some who were saying why are you celebrating why are you talking about what Jesus has done for you but there were some who were saying yes Lord if you can do it for him you can do it for me. Blind Bartimaeus was discouraged by the men who were walking with Jesus. When he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. They said, shut up, you blind man. Shut up, you smell bad man. Shut up, you man who have not had a bath for years. Shut up, you cripple. Shut up, you bad breath person. But he didn't shut up. He recognized that his breakthrough was not in what man could do for him, which was to give him arms, to give him money, to write him a check. He realized that his breakthrough was in an encounter with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And so he pressed despite the obstacles. He pressed despite the resistance. He pressed despite even the very authority. Come on now. Because these guys, the, the, the disciples and the, and, the, um, and the other people that were around Jesus were the authority. They were his armor bearer. They had a, a authority to stop anyone from coming to Jesus. But he pressed despite the authority telling him no. He pressed despite the naysayers and the, and the, and the haters telling him no he pressed same way like the woman with the issue of blood and when he pressed in his voice the woman of issue of blood pressed with her body she pressed through and touched blind Bartimaeus pressed with his voice it doesn't matter which way you press just press or oh, somebody don't hear me it doesn't matter how you get to the presence of God just press if it's a shout, if it's calling his name, do it. If it is time in the word, do it. If it is time in prayer, do it. If it is time just living right, do it. Whatever way you can get the presence of God to be yours, to own it, to live in it, to walk in it, to move and have your being in it, do it. Press in because in pressing in, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same in Jesus' name. And so, Father, by your spirit this morning, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak an impartation of your presence, your spiritual breakthrough, your spiritual manifestation, your spiritual glory. Lord, let this morning be like the morning in the upper room at Pentecost. God Almighty, move mightily upon everyone, God. Hallelujah. Lord Lily Pop says she wants more of you. She wants your presence. She has gotten the revelation and she has moved from focusing on arms and, 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 and has now focused on arms. God, she has moved away from money and now she wants your honey. Oh God Almighty, glorify yourself in Lily Pop today, God. Lord, do for her what you did for the woman with the issue of blood. Do for her what you did for the man at the pool of Bethesda. Do for her and for all others who are here this morning God upgrade increase improve expand enlarge pour more into us oh God that we can come forth for sure because we have more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself in every life today oh God Almighty hallelujah yes Lord and God as Natalie Reed has come in and said God I want more too father anoint her afresh heal where she needs healing deliver where she needs deliverance lord let natalie god almighty come into this kairos moment and receive what the man at the, pit, the temple beautiful received the man at bethesda god touch natalie because you know what natalie reed needs right now i speak to her life i speak to her family i speak to her bloodline and i command every generational curse natalie there's a generational curse of brokenness that is in your family 
hallelujah, a brokenness of, 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 of things not going the way it's supposed to all the time. You, you, you look like you're going in a direction uh, with relationship, with, with your finances, with work, and it just seemed to fall off a cliff. Things just don't seem to continue on uh, uh, to, 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 to the end or to a conclusion for you and it has been so in your family this morning by the spirit of the living God we stand in agreement as a family by the spirit the anointing of God and we break every generational curse off of you Natalie Reed we break every generational curse that has kept you and your family kept you and your generation in a lockup we decide we declare this morning that the angels have come with authority and power to release you and to release your family to release your children and your children's children from the lockup of the enemy through the generational curse of your great great grandfather and grandmother I release you this morning I declare the gates that have locked you Natalie Reed and every other fourth watch family member I tear open that gate like Samson this morning I rip it off of his hinges and I take it to, 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 to Gaza and I throw it away over the cliff never to come back you will never be locked up never be arrested never be chained to any heathen ever again in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I reject re reverse every curse every generational curse hallelujah Yes, I, I, I see it, Natalie. The Lord showed me that relationships just not working, just not working. And it's not just now. There were times when it didn't matter to you. You felt like you were you were you were you were, you, you, you were hurt a little, but you could get over it. But as you get a little older, it, it leaves more scars. I see a lot of scars on your heart, Natalie, a lot of scars. Oh, gee, today's not prophetic Wednesday, but glory to God. Hallelujah. I see scars on your heart, Natalie. But right now I ask the name of Jesus Christ. Christ of Nazareth Lord remove those scars from Natalie's heart remove those scars oh God Lord as you did for the woman with the issue of blood there were scars of shame there were scars of pain scars of disappointment scars of low self-esteem scars of rejection that was on that woman and all of that got healed by the touch of your garment all of that got healed when the blood stopped flowing father God I declare this day Natalie Reed healed from everything that easily beset her i declare a falling off of the chains a falling off of every chain that has carried that she has carried through her umbilical cord of her parents and her grandparents i release you from every pain every hurt every disappointment lord by your holy angels minister to natalie right now minister 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 every pain every hurt every unclean spirit working against Natalie's purpose and against her future. I command you right now, as she hears my voice, enters her body, enters her soul, I command you now, loose her out, out by fire. I'm not asking you. I'm not even going to shout. I'm giving you a command. Loose Natalie Reed right now. Up and out, up and out, up and out. Come on, Natalie, you may feel like you want to yawn or cough. Don't suppress it. Don't swallow anything that's coming up in your mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command you, uproot from her stomach. Uproot every soul tie spirit from bad relationships that Satan sent to impart and to ejaculate and to contaminate her womb, her uterus. I give you instruction now. Come out of her womb. Come out of her uterus. Out. Come on, up and out. Up and out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, break and go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out, go into the bathroom, out, now, into the toilet and go, never return. In the name of Jesus Christ, Natalie, I declare you cleansed, I declare you free, I declare that this is the day that you have seen Jesus high and lifted up and his train has filled the temple of your body, the temple of your life. No more will your past, no more will your decisions, no more will that which you did not do or did not accomplish in the past be a burden on your back or a yoke around your neck. I sever them from your life this morning and I set you free in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's mighty name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Suzette, I see you saying that you are just frustrated you, you you can't take anymore the devil is a liar the devil is a liar Suzette I, I think your name last name was Williams 
or something like that. Suzette, yes, I saw that going up as I was praying for uh, uh, Natalie. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Suzette, I declare this morning is your energizer morning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as you energized Elijah when he was at that deep place, that dark place, that place of depression, that place of oppression, and you energized him, you fed him, you clothed him, you, 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 you set him on a path and that, that 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 would take him to the next level you set him on a path that would cause him to recognize who you are father i ask you to minister to suzette and any other person this morning that is experiencing low self-esteem that is experiencing a downcast soul like david i say unto you lord hope is in you lord jesus our hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness we dare not trust the weakest frame but only lean on jesus name lord we lean upon your name this morning we lean upon your name glory to god we lean on your name this morning for deliverance from every plot for deliverance from every trap every scheme <coughs> Hallelujah. Lord, minister to your people. Minister to those on TikTok. Minister to those on Facebook. Minister, Lord God Almighty, because Suzette is not the only one that is feeling downcast today. But I uplift your soul. I uplift your spirit. I uplift your body. I uplift every element of you. Your mind, will, and emotion. Anything that you're going through, you're wondering. Christmas is coming and I don't see how I'm going to buy gifts for my children. I don't see how I'm going to have a good meal. I don't see it yet, but I say to you this morning, if you focus on Jesus, you'll get more than what man can give you. You'll get more than what you were expecting. You'll get more than what you need. I'm saying to you, the man at the gate, Temple Beautiful, he jumped up and he was not begging money anymore. But it wasn't funny how he was running all about and celebrating. The man at the pool of Bethesda, when Jesus told him to arise and take up his bed, when the men who used to he used to be afraid of men who couldn't help him men who couldn't heal him men who couldn't deliver him they were then taking set on him they were saying why are you walking around with your bed on the sabbath aren't you supposed to be, be, be observing the sabbath and he was there and hey can i put in my own words this is not what was said but if he was a Jamaican, he would say, the Sabbath couldn't heal me. The Sabbath didn't deliver me. But the author of the Sabbath healed me. And therefore, I do what the author of the Sabbath say I must do. He said, take up your bed and walk. I'm taking up my bed and walk. Because you guys worship the Sabbath, but I worship the giver of the Sabbath. Oh, somebody didn't hear me this day. Somebody should be screaming, hallelujah. We don't worship the Sabbath. We worship the giver of the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath can't heal you. The Sabbath can't deliver you. The Sabbath can't give you a breakthrough. The Sabbath don't have a hem of garment or a garment of praise. The Sabbath, hallelujah, is not who you must worship. You must worship the giver of the Sabbath. And so the man was obeying Jesus and not Hallelujah. The Sabbath. Oh, somebody didn't hear me this morning. Glory to God. We got to understand that when Jesus becomes the central point of our existence, everything else get easy. It was easy for that man who was not educated, who was not even... A, 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 listen, this man was born blind. He was born blind. Blind. Understand me. Which means he did not, they didn't have Braille back then. People who were born blind were considered paraplegics, rejects. They didn't get to go to school. They didn't learn to read because uh, they, 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 they you had to read what the scribes wrote. And so for him to have been born blind, he was not eloquent. But when he went before the, 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 the rulers, when he went before the scribes and Pharisees, when he stood before them and they started to question him, oh, he was eloquent. He was ready. He was educated. Because I'm saying to you, Jesus may have opened your eyes, but he open your brain as well. He may open your ears, but he open your soul as well. He may, hey, somebody got to hear me. When you touch the hem of his garment, come on, Natalie. 
Come on, Lily Papa. When you touch the hem of Jesus' garment and you begin to walk with him, that which you thought you need is not all he will give you. Oh, you're not hearing me. You think you need a husband, but hang on to Jesus. And he will not only give you a husband, he will give you a car. He will give you a house. He will give you clothes. He'll give you shoes. He'll give you things that you didn't think you need because you were focusing on one thing. But when you honor God, when your ways please him, he does more than you are expecting. And so don't ask God for anything other than more than him. And with more than him comes overflow. With more than him, with more of him comes expansion, enlargement. He told Abraham, I'm going to stop right here now because I think you are fully encouraged and running over. When he said to Abraham, leave all that you had in the natural. Hallelujah. Leave all that you have and come follow me. Come to what seemed like nothing. Come to what seemed like a hey, worthlessness. Come on, sometimes when you hang on to Jesus, come on, women of God, the men are going to say, what you and your Jesus, what Jesus give you. Jesus can keep you warm at night. Jesus can help you pay the rent and the light and the water. When you hang on to Jesus, Abraham left everything his parents had. Check back the Bible in Genesis again. You'll see that Abraham's family was one of wealth. They were one of idol worship. They were one that had stuff. And God says, leave what you have. Walk away from the blessings of man, the blessings of the, of the natural, and come to a blessing that I will show you. So when you're leaving by faith, you're not seeing anything. But what is at the end hallelujah is greater than what you had before i'm saying to you women who are in relationships with men that not going anywhere in not saying will you marry me he's not saying that you're gonna be the woman of, uh, of the rest of his life and maybe because you have one or two children for him or maybe even more you're thinking oh god god help me jesus help me to be comfortable in a place where I shouldn't be. And I'm saying, stop praying that prayer. Oh, you're not saying it like that, but you're saying, God, give me a breakthrough, which means if God gives you a financial breakthrough, you're going to stay with that worthless man. I don't mean any disrespect. Please, maybe I shouldn't say that. God, forgive me. I'm sorry. If God gives you a breakthrough, you're going to stay in that situation where you shouldn't be. Sometimes some of you are in some ministries. You're in some ministries where you, you, God has been prompting you that this is not enough for you. Where I want to take you, this is not feeding you. This is not helping you. This is not causing you to grow. But you're asking God for miracles. You're asking God for signs and wonders. You're asking God to heal you that you can stay where you are and God is saying my daughter my son if I heal you and let you stay where you are I would not have done anything for you when God caused blind Bartimaeus to be healed blind Bartimaeus was so smart that he threw off his clothes he threw off everything that was old knowing that he would never go back to what once was I'm saying to you some of you are in jobs and you're saying God I hate it here I hate it here but are comfortable you know why because of the pay because of the benefit Benefits. Come on. The health insurance is good. All these things are good. God, you know, when you work for government, they, they abuse you and they treat you bad and I can't get no promotion. But the health benefits and the job benefits. And if I don't come to work often, they still can't fire me because of the government situations. God, I, I, I just want you to bless me so I can stay here. And God is saying that ain't going to happen. I don't bless you in mess. I take you out of mess, make you your best and then send you go take another test or somebody got to hear me this morning and so if you really want to get out of a bad situation that you're in ask for more of God and when more of God fills you up he will then direct you come on when Jesus got baptized by John he went down as one way and came up another and when he came up he came up in glory he came up in power he came up with anointing he came up and was confirmed by a dove that came down and landed on him and the voice from heaven said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he moved from being around men come on you got to hear this because this is the spirit of God Jesus then was moved when he was confirmed and filled with the Holy Spirit he moved from where he was walking with men come on and walked with an angel and the Holy Spirit oh you didn't hear that this is a fresh revelation I'm just getting 
Hallelujah. Pastor Marshall, note that for me, please, because I need to examine that some more and preach it. When Jesus was walking with men, he walked with men right into the water. He went down and was buried, came up in God, was baptized by the Holy Ghost and fire, was given an authentic, authoritative uh, voice from God, and then he moved from being with man to the next level of being led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be challenged. Sometimes God wants to fill us up so that we can move to the next level. And when we move to the next level, we will only see the devil. Oh my God. Wow. Somebody should bring an offering for this revelation this morning. It's revelation after revelation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. When God wants to move us to the next level, the Holy Spirit is going to lead us. Come on, K. White, you can relate to this more than anybody else. When God wants to move us to the next level, he's asking us to accept him in a deeper way, to let him fill us up in a deeper way where things that people say and do can no longer affect us. He will move us to the next level, but we're going to encounter a bigger devil. But understand that the victory in that wilderness experience when people begin to leave you when people begin to say all manner of evil about you and you leave them you leave them sometimes they can't leave them physically but you leave them in your spirit you stop listening to what they're saying you stop taking on what they're saying about you you stop taking on come on hallelujah hallelujah i'm speaking to a very special and close person to me right now by the spirit of god woman of god my wife my partner for life hear me Hey, the Spirit of God says, no matter what they say, no matter what they say about you, whether demons or devils or humans, no matter what they say about you, no matter who tell you what anyone is saying, God says, I have rooted and grounded you. I have rooted and grounded you. And the higher you get in me is the more people will try to tear you down. But keep your eyes on me and not let the winds and the waves of their voices and the things that they're doing pull you down under where you are coming from. You are going up, up, up not down 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 abraham didn't look back again and god made him wealthy abraham didn't look back again and god gave him places that he didn't expect god gave him a land and a place and a building and, a, and and things that he could not imagine that was greater than the wealth of his father he didn't stay in the place where he once was he went to the place where god is and it was glorious i'm saying to you this morning people of god if we can leave the place where we once were in our minds in our hearts in our history in our relationships we if we can move from that place where we once were destroyed and come to the place where we once where we now need to live we will understand that God is able stop thinking about what people are saying what people are doing think about what God is saying and what God is doing and watch God elevate you because you have to resist what enemy is saying he said to Jesus if thou be the son of God hallelujah you are able Able to turn this stone into bread Jesus was hungry until white squall his lips were cracked he was thirsty he was desperate he had a need he had a need like some of us have a need because we are hungry we're hungry for, for, for things of the world we're hungry because our bank account is empty we're hungry because our children are desperately going in the wrong direction we are hungry because we need a spouse we're hungry because we need warmth we need intimacy we need healing from the past hurts that we have experienced in church and in relationships and in family we need all these things but god is saying the only thing you need is me if you have me all those things begin to fall off like scales that fell off job when job recognized that the only thing he need in this world his wife says why don't you curse god and die his children died his servants died his animals his cattle all of his wealth died and passed away but he held on to god and the more of god he got close to is the more was replenished for him his very flesh came back like a baby his children were replenished his wife got an upgrade even though she was not the one holding on to god i'm saying to you that even people who don't believe god even people who tried to discourage you from honoring god will be blessed by one you honor god Hallelujah. They will get the overflow. Job's wife got the overflow of his faithfulness. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Press in. Press in, woman of God. 
pressing woman of God. You know who I'm talking to. Pressing woman of God. Don't let the enemy convince you that anything is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. But you have to believe that on your own. You have to believe that on your own. Nothing is wrong with you. God who has begun a good work must complete it until it's coming. Come on. I hope somebody is hearing me and being encouraged this morning. Our God who has begun a good work is faithful. It may look ominous. It may look difficult. But he is the influencer of everything concerning our lives. When he speaks a thing, it doesn't mean it won't come with challenges. But it will work out the way he said. Abraham had challenges. Look at what happened with Lot. There were challenges. He could have got upset and said, you know what? I shouldn't did bring you. I should not have taken you with me. I should have left you to suffer. Abraham had challenges with Lot before he became powerful and mighty. And he had challenges with Lot after he became powerful and mighty. Because remember, the same Abraham had to take 300 and odd people from his house and go save Lot when he was kidnapped. He had to be interceding for Lot when he was down in Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham never stopped having challenges, but God delivered him out of them all and delivered those who he wanted to deliver through Abraham and for Abraham as well. I'm saying to us people of God, if we sink deep into God, our children's problems will be solved. If we sink deep into God, our financial problems will be solved. If we sink deep into God, our emotional problems, our relationship problems, all of our problems will be solved if we sink deep into God. You know why? Because problems are not in God. When you go into God, problems get ejected problems get ejected because light and dark cannot exist in the same place that means as you dive into him who is light his light delivers you from the darkness so all your financial woes all your emotional woes all your relationship woes all your rejection all your abuse all your hurt all your physical all your witchcraft everything that people has done to you as you dive into him they get expelled Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you were blessed and encouraged. Stay in God, K. White. Stay in God. Keep believing God. Don't respond to what Satan says except by the word of God. When you get cursed, God says bless. Bless those who curse you. That's what the word says. Do good to them that despitefully use you. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I hope somebody's been encouraged this morning. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lily Pop. You triggered the move of God in a mighty way this morning. And I'm saying to you, Lily Pop, I don't know what your level of spirituality is. I don't know what your relationship with God is. But I say to you this morning, if you have fallen short, if you have moved away from the center of God, this morning is a good morning for you to say, Lord, I am sorry, center me. Because often, especially you women, especially you women, and I don't mean this derogatorily, please don't take it any way other than from a loving father. And I'm not saying I'm your father, I'm not trying to get no position in your life. But I take it as if it is coming from your loving father. Hear me carefully. Do not allow human man to distract you from the husband man of God. Please. It is not going to look well for you. When Jesus comes. And is asking. Why are you not in my arms? Why am I not saying. Enter thou into my kingdom. Thou good and faithful servant. Because of a man? No. God can give you a man that is a champion. Because he is a man in God. By God. And for God. You don't have to try and find one for yourself. I guarantee you, God has not run out of options. People are saying men short, so you have to go find one for yourself. Men not short. God created them, and he created one for everyone. Amen? So let's focus on God. Let's humble ourselves before him and say, God, give me all of you. All of you. Lord, give me all of you. 
and I give you all of me. Take my life, O oh Lord, and give me you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I know it's not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Oh, Lord, give me you. Come on, sing it to him this morning. If you can't sing, talk it to him. Say, Lord, give me you. Give me you. Now, the songwriter says, I hope it's not too late. We're not going that route this morning. We are saying we know with confidence that it's not too late. Why? Because we're still alive. We're still alive. Come on, if you only come into this platform, if you only come, if you're a visitor and you come to get an encouraging word to keep you in, 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 in sin and in iniquity, if you come to get a word that will make your soul feel good and leave, you came to the wrong platform, you came to the wrong devotion. Here we want to grow in God. Here we want to become anointed sons that God can trust. Here we want to become people of God that walk in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We want to become champions in the spirit and in the natural. We want to be sons of God that stand in authority and power. We want to speak to our circumstances and not have somebody else speak to our circumstances for us is somebody hearing me this morning lily pop i'm telling you girl god wants you to speak to your situations yes there is a financial thing going on right now but if you look back in your life god has been calling you to stand on that place where he wants you that you can have the authority to speak to your money and command it to come but you got to be there in power you got to be there in authority you got to be there in dominion because the money that you get now you will spend and you'll need more again and so you'll constantly be fasting and praying for a financial breakthrough instead of fasting and praying to become more like god who never needed a financial breakthrough he was a financial breakthrough for others come on hallelujah the Lord is just giving me revelation after revelation Jesus hallelujah never needed a financial breakthrough money was attracted to him come on what would have cost millions of dollars to feed the thousands of people Jesus was able to do by just a prayer just faith when Peter needed money to pay his taxes or he would have been arrested Jesus sent him to fish and the fish the, the fish gave him money that took care of all of his bills i'm saying to you we need to get to that place like jesus where we do what we see him do say what we hear him say be how he was when he was on the earth where we are not asking people for things people are asking us for things amen hallelujah Hallelujah. What a God. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister V. Scott, it's elevation season. Come on. If you take on, please, I'm begging you. If you miss any part of this message this morning i believe this is one of the best messages that you need to watch over listen over let it soak into your spirit and let it let it reverberate let it encourage you let it it, it it guide you and direct you let it be the strength the foundation on which you go forward especially natalie and lillipop this is a day that god has ordained for you because he shifted the whole program just because of you too I'm saying to you guys, stop believing that a life with Christ is just about the frills and the, the externals and the niceness and the people quoting a holy heap of Psalms and Isaiahs and you're jumping up and down and feel like you're saved because the word's sweet and you are able to preach with the preacher and say the scriptures that he's saying. That's not what Christianity is about. That's not what following Christ is about. Following Christ is about doing what we see him do, saying what we hear him say, being who he has called us to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that um, I haven't gotten into Romans 12 yet. 
and I was planning to get into Romans 12 from about quarter to six this morning, but um, that has passed based on where God has taken us. And so uh, in, in, in closing for a few minutes, I want to just talk to you about something that the Lord was just ministering to me on as I prepared for devotion this morning. And it's, it's, it, it seemed pretty simple to most people, but it wasn't simple to me because um, often when you have a great desire for the things of God and for the glory of God, when you see that glory being manifested in other people and through other people, you sometimes have to fight yourself to stay in a place of of, of, of humility, in a place of, uh, of, of not what we call in Jamaica bad mind or um, standard envy or jealousy. Uh, you have to you have to be careful. Uh, to, 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 to bring your body under subjection that the things of God does not inspire you to the point where you 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 you, you, you sin against God amen hallelujah and so uh, on Sunday we had a guest preacher and um, the guest preacher is a an anointed woman of God chosen from she was a baby chosen to walk in the pathway that she's walking in chosen to do glorious wonderful awesome things but any one of you any one of us any one of us in the kingdom that has a desire that have been taught that the greatness and the glory of god is more important to have than things and silver and gold you will have a desire when you see the glory of god manifest through someone or, or, or some people you will have a desire you will start to think oh god how can i be like that the difference is not is it is not um wanting to walk in the glory it's wanting to walk in the exact glory of what you see because the exact glory of what you see may not be for you your glory your manifested glory and the manifested glory of someone else is not a comparative or a desire for you to have it's like seeing someone with a particular house that God give them. And because you want a house, rather than saying, God, give me a house like you have given to others in the past. Give me a house that you have in store for me. You said, I want that house. You start to drive past and claim it. We not only claim house and car that belongs to someone else, but we claim anointing as well. We pass people's church and we go to people's church and we see them in a great anointing and we're saying, God, I want that anointing. Why don't I have that anointing? What about your anointing? Are you saying God made a mistake? Mm. Are you saying what God has given you is not good enough? It can't accomplish your purpose? The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. And so we miss it sometimes, not with any malicious intent or any iniquity. We miss it sometimes because our desire is misdirected or misplaced. Come on, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so God took me through this morning, hallelujah, a, a, a process of two words that are so similar. They, 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 they could easily mean the same thing, but they don't in the eyes of God. Watch this. I'm going to blow your mind, taking you to, 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 to the next level this morning. The Lord took me to, to two words and he says, uh, uh, Ron, even as you have seen great power manifest through my daughter, even as you desire to move in that way, understand this, that there is a word called award and a word called reward. And God began to take me through. I had to write down and I had to go look up what the word means. And he says, an award is a prize or other mark of recognition given in honor of an achievement. An award is a prize or other mark of recognition given in honor to an achievement, uh, in honor of an achievement. Okay, that's an award. No, the next word is reward. Reward, a thing given, a thing, a thing, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Remember, the, just check these words, you know, because they're, they're so close and they could easily uh, be like each other. The reward now is a thing given in recognition of service, effort, or achievement. The similarities is in achievement at the end and so achievement for one who has received an award and one who has gotten an, a reward is the same it's a reflection of an achievement but the award is completely different from the reward the award is a prize that means it's a gift and God gives good gifts amen 
And so the gift that you get as an award, you get like Jeremiah before you were formed in your mother's womb. As you recognize this award that God has given to you, come on, you then, when you do what God has called you to do, you get recognized for the achievement of honoring God by manifesting the award of the gift of the Holy Spirit, the award of the gift of your talents and abilities, the award of things that you cannot learn at school, but God has brought up out of you. And so that is where your achievement comes. And so you get an award in the initial stage and you get uh, recognized, come on, by God. When, G when God said to Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Come on. Hallelujah. That's because Jesus manifested the award that God has given him. And when he, when he manifested that and people saw it, they were drawn unto him. A reward is something given when you complete an action. Come on, when you complete an action, are you hearing me? So, 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 an award is given to the, the the guys who save people. For example, for those who are Jamaicans and know, out by um, uh, Flatbridge, people fall off into the river in their cars, and these guys dive in and at great risk to themselves save the people, and they get an award. Why do you think they get an award? Not necessarily for the action, but for the heart. Oh, Jesus, come on, baby. Because mm -hmm. many people can swim, but not many people would dive in there. Oh, somebody not hearing me. Many people can preach, but not many people will go the extra mile to be a shepherd. Oh, you're not hearing me. There is an award that God has given. Jeremiah said, Ah, I feel like I can't teach, I can't prophesy anymore. I need to leave this thing. But there was like fire shut up in his bones. People can walk away from the office of prophet. They can walk away from the office of pastor. But if they have an award in them that call them to purpose. If the purpose of the ministry that they've been called to is an award from God, they will never be able to walk away. But they can get a reward constantly. They can get big tithes and offerings. And they will stay on the pulpit. They will stay as shepherds. But only because of the reward, not because of the award. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm. Woo! I hope you get it because I have to close it right there. Mm -hmm. My God, let us not look to function for a reward, but let us function out of the award. Mm -hmm. God has awarded us, each of us, a gift, talent, ability, a measure of faith, and the Holy Spirit. Let us function out of that so that we can be recognized for our achievement as sons of God and not be recognized for the periodic things that we did, that man, because God gives us an award. Man gives us a reward. Amen? So God gives us an award, and then when we utilize that award, we get a reward at the end. Come on. But man only gives us a reward when our actions are suitable for it. So we can work for a reward, but we have to let our award work for us. Oh, I like that. I like that. Come on. We, in our flesh, work for a reward, but when we are submitted to Christ, our award work for us. That's why the Bible says our gifts, talents, and abilities will do what? Make room for us and take us before great men. That is our award from God that brings a reward in the end. From God and man. <coughs> the reward that men give us will not necessarily produce a, a reward from God. But the award that men that God give us will produce a reward from men and a reward from God. That's how God ministered to me this morning. Powerful stuff. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, just one thing. Morning. Morning, morning. everybody. Um, persons who are great persons who are in the in the kingdom of god that are great are the persons who capitalize on their award hey come on hallelujah so um 
And I can call names. We, we have persons like Joyce Meyer. Mm. Pe people have things to say, quote unquote things to say. But she capitalized on the fact that she's a great communicator. Hallelujah. And she talks and talks and talks. And she has have, have won so many souls for God, God. Because she capitalized on her award. Yes. And what happens with us is that when we compare ourselves with others we we the more we compare is the more our award is being diminished hallelujah we are weakening we are getting more weaker when we compare ourselves to other people and so god wants us to see what he has given us and if we don't know yet what he has given us ask him god what is my award and when god tells you your award how can I stir up this award that is in me so that I can be of benefit to those that are around? Me? Hallelujah. So you can be a reward to those who are yes. around. That's it. Perfectly said, woman of God. Perfectly, perfectly said. Excellent. Excellent. You are welcome, Lily Pop. You are welcome. I'm happy that you were blessed this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For those who are new joining us, if you are if you are a Christian, hallelujah, saved, sanctified, baptized with Jesus on your mind, we do communion in this devotional time every single morning. Every morning we do communion, bar none. So if you are new, please make sure that uh, that you get your communion. You can use a little grape juice. You can be like my brother Marlon and get your your um your your real your little tubs of real wine. I don't want you to be drinking a big glass of wine so early in the morning. Get a little tubs of wine, hallelujah, and um, and your communion bread, and we bless it, and we eat of the body and drink of the blood of Jesus Christ every single morning. Amen. Hallelujah. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So be encouraged. It is well. Good morning, my brother. Hallelujah. God bless you. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your word of encouragement. Thank you for the, the souls that you have blessed, for the spirits that you have lit a fire under to encourage and to motivate and to set a light to go. Hallelujah. Like the foxes that uh, Samson tied together and released in the, in, the, um, in the fields of the Philistines. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we are going through and burning, setting a light wherever we go, the light of God, the fire of God to everyone that we come in contact with. May they never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success, but more than anything else, may your body and your blood consume, capture, encapsulate everything that is us and make us you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> And so, as the Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Your sacrifice has been noted in heaven and your reward. Hallelujah is on the way god is a faithful god and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him his word cannot lie and his word will not return unto him void but must accomplish that which was sent to accomplish and as you diligently raise up each morning and seek earnestly to get into the presence of god to hear what god has to say understand that god will reward you because you are not doing it for a reward you're doing it because he has awarded you with his spirit amen hallelujah and deep must cry out to deep spirit must connect with spirit and so our spirit is desirous to connect with the spirit of the living god one and another 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day. God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day. His way. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you. And we love the world around it too. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Ruan Wade saying, Arriva Dirchi. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And remember to do something good for someone today. Call someone and bless them. Give someone a, a, a makeup in their meal if you can't buy them a meal. Do something good. Tell someone that Jesus loved them. And remember today is fasting day and we don't eat. So, so, so the lunch that you were going to miss, that lunch that you would have bought for that $20 if you're in the U.S., uh, um, or that ten dollars hallelujah um make an effort to give someone that lunch if you are able or just pray for someone at 4 30 we will have breaking a fast hallelujah and we will take the opportunity to start revelation 12 um until and so we can continue amen praise god from whom all blessings flow have a great great one guys love you love you love you love you bye Hallelujah.